well, and they do. also told me some other people who had done it and I thought it sounded like fun, but we start, we then started. I went back into the studio well, and then two weeks went by and I didn't even notice. Yeah, we started out as, as a <laughs> podcast, but we got in the, into this live streaming thing. I see. Caffeine.tv is a, is a live stream. It, they, it's, it was based around gamers. You know, you know how the younger generation. Yeah, like Twitch. You know, that, yeah, like, like Twitch. Kind of like Twitch, as, the, as I've heard. I've never actually looked at Twitch myself, but anyway. I've been streaming to Twitch from my studio. Oh, nice. Um, I don't really know how to do it, so I'm just going to keep putting videos on it until something happens. <laughs> okay. Well, Caffeine well, TV Caffeine is, is really simple. I mean, it's a real-time yeah. platform, so uh, everything that you see and, and hear when you're watching the broadcast is in real time. Uh, I see. Uh, chat comes in in real time. Vocals and uh, audio and video go out in real time. It's 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 wonderful. It's just something you don't have on on. Twitch or right. any and other you can interact platforms. with your with your listeners, your your viewers in real time. Really? Right. All right. I'll yeah. look into it. Because I've just set up a whole streaming studio in my room so that I can like play music and not have it need to be acoustic and not have it have to be cell phone audio. You know, I, I wanted to I, I, I wanted know to sort of play I, music I've and, I've been watching. I've been uh, um uh commenting. I'm Webb, by the way. Hi. Nice. You remember, Hi Webb. You saw my comments. <laughs> uh Yes. Yeah, I, I've really been enjoying watching every, everything that you, you're putting out on uh, on YouTube. Has it been sounding good? Sounds great. Yeah. Um, your your Thursday special thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, Live it's, on Thursday. It's very groovy. I've been enjoying that. I okay. like how you how you can do all that by yourself and you use your uh, <laughs> electronics <laughs> to do your thing. Yeah. Samplers and loops and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed a lot in, in a lot of your playing and a lot of your videos, your 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 uh, live uh, songs that, that that you employ a lot of toys. You yes. like a lot. Of, you like a lot of the whiz bangs. Um, are are you into the solid state or or are you, you you like some of the old school toys? Well, what do you mean by old school toys? Like well, analog, analog, analog versus solid state. An analog versus solid state. Two versus you know solid state. That kind of thing. Well. I, the most of the toys I use are really just like samplers and drum machines and stuff that play loops. And then I just organize the loops into patterns and then I'm just constantly switching between patterns that also could be known as verses and choruses. Okay. Well, so those, those... control over basically the whole band. So like the band is playing, imagine the band was just like robots, like at Chuck E. Cheese, right? Right. And then you <laughs> press another button and the robots start to play another section. And well, well, that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm telling the robots when to switch to a different section, <laughs> instead of having real time human beings that I have to feed and house, doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, having drummers around, yay drummers. Or like having three other human beings that I have to now set up microphones for. My room setup would be, I wouldn't even be able to fit them there. You know. Understandably, it just um, possible when they weren't possible before. My father was a musician, so I grew up around that. Watching guys trying trying to cram into a, a a one or two bedroom apartment to 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 uh, rehearse for a gig or something. Yeah, so imagine trying to stream that and have it sound decent. Right. So how did yeah. you uh, how did you get started in music? I started when I was eight years old. My mom signed me up for piano lessons, and I hated it. And then I quit. And then I found another teacher that I really liked, and then I liked it. It was really the, if I wouldn't have tried a different teacher, I don't know if I would have stuck with music. I really don't. I always tell people, uh, if you don't like it, try to figure out why you don't like it. Or if your kid doesn't like it, try to figure out why. It might not be because they don't have talent. It might just be because of some other stupid little thing that could be fixed. And so then I played piano forever and went to college for like not piano because I already knew how to play the piano, but I went to college as, with piano as my principal instrument. And then I fell out of love with it in a really long, sad story about mean, jaded teachers. And then I was kind of lost for a couple of years. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I still loved music, but I hated playing the piano. And I finally had the bright idea to just do something else in music. So I decided to pick up the electric guitar. And... Whoa. Then that starts the story of the last eight years. It's been really nuts. I've been building this career for ever since I decided to pick up the guitar, really. 
I heard you mention in, in, in an interview with someone about uh, Berkeley, going to Berkeley. Is that is that right? Yep, that's college. That was a and, crazy time. The school was, was really good, really good school. I learned a lot of great stuff there. Was that your, was that your piano was time, or was that was that music class. study, or just college study? Um, it was music college study. <laughs> it was there was no science, math. We had a we had a math class that was like math as it relates to acoustics. It wasn't truly math. You know, we had some writing classes because in order for art schools to be an accredited school, they they do need to offer other types of, of courses. They need to at least offer them. So, like, I took some writing classes. I took some history classes, but only, like, one or two for my entire, like, what, college what, career. Everything else was li- horn writing, vocal writing, string writing, orchestrations, learning how to use Pro Tools, learning how to set up microphones. Everything was just everything else, and only music. But the production side as well. Yeah, production, well, it, arranging, everything from teaching and therapy to business and, like, I don't know, business and, like, there was this interesting, I don't even remember what it was, but there was business, and then it started performance, and then you could do studio production only. It was called mp e like, M as in man, M, P, and E. And then there was one called Contemporary Writing and Production where they mixed you doing arrangements for bands with production. So I would, one class I would be writing for a big band, and then the next class I would be in the studio learning how to record that big band. <laughs> so that that sounds like you came out of there with a, a very, very well-rounded education and not just how to play music, not just how to record music, but how to everything involved with that medium. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's just the major I chose. Um, some of the classes I took, you wouldn't be able to take if you didn't take a major like that. Like if you if you majored in performance, you're not going to be taking any of the studio classes that have nothing to do with the studio, you know? So, um, or if you majored in like uh, music therapy or music business, you're not really going to be doing a lot of performance classes either. So... It depends on the major you take. I, I chose the major I chose because it seemed like on paper it would provide me skills that I actually could use in my real life to maybe turn music into a job, like into a career that supports me. Right. So if, if you weren't able to make it as a, a rock star or a pop star or a blues star or whatever, you could use your skills in other ways you to could always, support yourself. You, you could always be an life. engineer or a producer or... Yep. Yeah, or I beautiful. could write jingles. Beautiful. You know, stuff like that. Or or write songs for commercials or, or score um, films or take people's songs and put chords to them. So spe- you know, spe- speaking of that, Jackie, um, I mean, like, from listening to your music, I, I, I see you. I, I, I think you have great potential and you could be a superstar someday. However, <laughs> what, what if, though, I mean, what if you were... The, the new millennium's Ray Wiley Hubbard. You know, you know, what do you mean by that? You don't know who Ray, Ray Wiley Hubbard is? Oh, I know who he is. Okay. But well, you know, he's, 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 he's always stayed small. He never, he never went big. He never would, yeah. he never signed with the big <laughs> record company. He never <laughs> compromised. Yes, he never compromised. His music never compromised anything. And th- there could be a lot of people out there to, to ask you to compromise things about your artistry because, like I, I, I you know, I mentioned, you, you seem to be able to. You seem to be able to do it all. You know, you you, you play the blues, which I, I I really love. That's my favorite style of music. <laughs> but but you you also you all throw throw in there. You know, some reggae stylings, and you you got some pop stylings as well. A lot of jazz. And <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I got Nick to listen to your your jazz piano song. Oh uh, no! Show just, my light. <laughs> yes. Yeah. J- just before yeah. just before we uh contacted I, you i hadn't listened to that one yet i've been listening to mostly your blues uh songs Stop. and uh i'm i'm also a musician and um I, I you know i couldn't help but think that i mean obviously you're very blues driven who are your influences musically uh, overall what, what do you listen to when you're not give it give us a top five <laughs> top Jackie. five like my whole life um, it, musical but, influences. What you what, what you listen to every day to influence. What what influences you every day? Um, honestly, lately I haven't been listening to a lot of music. I have not had the time. 
<laughs> the time that I have, I, I usually just practice um, or write or I'm in the studio. So I haven't really been like recreationally listening to music a lot. But before the last time where I had a lot of time to listen to music, which was driving on the road, I was listening to a lot of Frank Ocean and a lot of J. Cole. Okay. Yeah, a lot of hip hop. Like- like, and, um, how about like growing up? Like I, I saw some of your videos. Your dad is also a musician. Was, was yeah. he a big influence on you growing up? Like my father was a musician. He was a huge influence on me, uh, as far as my ear and how I listened to music growing up. Did he? Was he a big, big, big influence on you growing up uh, in, into getting into music? I think he was. Uh, in the biggest way he influenced me was how he performs and how he leads a band. Honestly, I, it's like I work with the. I work with this drummer, his name's Rodney, and he actually worked with my dad for like 25 years. So he like can predict everything I'm going to do musically. He can predict when I'm going to have the band break down. He can predict when I am like, you know, how some people like raise their guitar head up and then like slam it down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The whole band kind of cuts down in volume. Yeah. Yep. So do that. And, and Rodney cuts down in volume. But here's the thing. Rodney's completely blind. So he doesn't see me do it. He just knows that I'm about to do it because of the other stuff that I do leading up to it. And the only reason why he knows that is because that's what my dad did. And that's how he broke down the band. And so, like, I, my dad is the biggest influence on me when it comes to my performance style and my onstage persona. That sounds like some superpower kind of stuff going on over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rodney is a national treasure. If you were to you, – you guys should just interview him. He's Ch- Chad is calling him daredevil. Love- he's like well, a whole you know, other episode he's, there, he's really there's cool. always a possibility we like to talk to everyone and we're we're all inclusive and we like taboo subjects we don't we don't we don't shy away from anything yeah we, we definitely like music i don't know what, what you see behind us but we we do also kind of geek out time from time to time <laughs> all the um, I, don't know, I can see i can see some music nerds over there on the other side of the screen i can see that <laughs> I can see us talking well, shop on music for like three or four hours. You definitely, you definitely <laughs> could, especially with with Nick. You know, he was professionally schooled. Uh, yeah, plays piano, plays guitar. Just, it's <laughs> we understand. So, yeah, you, yeah <laughs> you could definitely jive together on on, on a lot of levels. Um, but um, so, but I want to talk to you about um, what I what I hear when when I first started listening to your music and. A lot of people hate hate uh, comparisons. You know, they could be so cliche, but um, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I need a shortcut to thinking. Okay, uh, your like your acoustic stylings, I it, it makes me think a lot of Ani DeFranco. Have you ever heard that uh, comparison? Um, I have not, but you I know, know who she is. You know who I'm talking and, about? Uh, it's, it's it's not crazy. I, I can see why you would feel that way. Well, but I've never heard that. I've heard Joan Armitrading. I've heard, I don't know why, I sound nothing like her. Well, you know, like there's she has so a lot of soul there. and she like is pretty bluesy and the way she sings is really sustained. And like, I guess we both are kind of bluesy, but like the way she sings is like this haunting way that I just, I just don't sound like that. If, if I sound like anybody, I sound like Sade or something, but Sade like, but louder, like, like rock Sade, you know what I mean? <laughs> like rock, but, rock Sade. Yeah, oh, like well, Sade s- sing rock. Speaking That's kind of what I feel Speaking of like. your voice, I, I was noticing on in, in your recordings, you sound completely different when you sing with a smile on your face. Oh, yeah. Or if you're <laughs> just being cool, straight, being a straight face. Like, like when you're doing your blues, you, you're usually pretty straight, fo- straight laced, straight faced. Yeah. yeah. And then when you're doing your your more poppy things, you I see you smiling bigger. Uh, yeah. You, you smiling bigger doing your choruses. Your voice sounds completely different when you do that. Do you pay attention to that while you're writing your music, while you're recording? Oh, no, that's it, actually like a tactic. Um, the way your voice sounds is completely dependent on how much air and breath control you have, support from your diaphragm, and also the shape of your mouth. You can actually... If you notice people who can do a lot of vocal impressions, check out how how variable their mouth shapes are or like how different their mouth shapes are from impression to impression. It's like a huge part of getting sound out of your getting tone. It's it's a huge part of it. 
Um, so whenever I'm smiling, it's because that's the tone that I want for that word. And that's the easiest way for me to get it out. Honestly, literally the only reason why I even smile on stage while I'm singing is because of that. People think I'm like having a great time, yeah. which I am. I love performing. Don't get me wrong. Right. But people think that's why I'm smiling. That's not why I'm smiling. I'm smiling because it's the best way to get the note out. See, that's what I, that's, that's what I was wondering. And wow, Nick, I, I'm really, I'm liking Jackie more and more. If, if that's possible, <laughs> I have been geeking out over your videos so bad for the last week or so. Well, that's cool. Wow. We got stuff to talk about. Thanks Damn, for, like, you're stuff. smart. Man, I appreciate that. <laughs> I like you, Jackie. You're smart. You're smart too. <laughs> well, no, no, look, I, I, I'm not the most uh, highly educated individual. I'm I'm a I'm a tech for life. I uh, I don't do traditional the traditional uh, college or anything like that. Uh, but I but I I'm 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 old, you know. I'm middle aged. I'm a man of a certain age. I, I've been around. I've done some things. I've seen some shit. I, I'm a veteran. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. You know, no. College is college is definitely the better way to go even if you're going to be in debt for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's true. Well, if you're in debt for the rest of your life, I don't think it's the better way to go. You know, maybe not, but you might not have PTSD for the rest of your life too. That's true. What do you want? Do you want the debt or do you want the nightmares? Like the waking nightmares? But the problem, like, well, the problem with college though, is you can, you can get the debt and the nightmares because of all the horrible things that happened on college campuses. But that's, you know, I mean, it depends we, on the college you go to. I was pretty okay at Berkeley. It was just a bunch of music nerds. It was like the band kids. You felt, you felt a bit safer there. Um, it wasn't safe, but I knew it wasn't safe. Like we were in the heart of downtown Boston. So like how uh -huh. can it be, you can't say it's safe. I'm not saying it's dangerous, but, but I mean, as far as the school I, and your, and your fellow limits. students, I uh, yeah, I mean, some of the students gave me a creepy vibe, um, from time to time. It wasn't overwhelming. The ratio of women to men is like 23% women in 70, you know, seven, I guess, percent men. That was, that was the percentage when I was there. So, I don't know what it is now. Wow. So there was a lot of dudes and there was a lot of thirsty dudes, but oh, wow, you know, the dude well, was being creepy. Just kind of try your best to get away from them. You know, every now yeah. and then I ran into a situation where I had to walk home alone because none of the cabs would pick me up. Uh, yeah. It happens sometimes in a big but city then like that. Was, once something like that would happen, I would not, I would try to learn from it and not get into that circumstance again, where I would even have to walk home in the first place. Those few times I did get lucky. Um, but it wasn't like I felt threatened all the time, you know, it was fine. So I it just wasn't, kinda, it was it, not like, not like you were gambling with your life. You, you felt somewhat, uh, no, I was, secure. I was just a recluse. I never yeah. went out. I, I met the people I liked and I trust, and I met the people that I trusted. And then that was who I hung out with. Like people always say, Oh, you went to Berkeley. Did you know? Blah blah blah, and I'm like, well, no, you I know had what? You know that was going to be one of the things I was going to. That was going to be one of the things I was going to ask you about. I mean, because what all I know about Berkeley, like I said, I'm I'm a bit older than you are, and, and I remember reading Guitar Player magazine and guitar, all those different mags. Um, one of, one of my heroes was uh, Steve Vai, and uh, nice. I like also like Joe Satriani, and they talk about their their days in Berkeley, you know, and um, like Vai met. Stuart Ham at Berkeley and they played together and he wrote his first record there. And then yeah. it, did you ha meet people there while, while you're at Berkeley that, that you played with that, that uh, maybe you recorded with or, or that you still keep in contact with uh, any name dropping for us? Anybody got big yet? I maybe you'll be, did the, you'll be the only one. Uh, I did talk to uh, mono neon a few times. We were, we went to Berkeley at the same time. He's this bass player and he does all these wacky videos on the internet where he, uh -huh. takes like popular like you know like ain't nobody got time for that he'll take that right. like night nice, that news broadcast and then he'll transcribe it to bass notes and literally play the notes of the people speaking and <laughs> like overdub it with the talking at the same time and it's, it's really funny Wait, so I'm... she'd be like ain't nobody got time for that and he'd be like dee, 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 dee. you know like he'd find the exact note that she was speaking on and and he's really famous for it if you look him up his name is mono neon He's Mono a really neon. great bass we'll player. Well, look it up. You were and doing I met little, him like you were doing twice. Little, you were doing a little talking guitar on your Thursday thing that I just watched this morning. By the way, this, when you you're like a little soloing, just talking along with you. Or was it a, the new song that you were doing at the very end? 
Oh yeah, uh, Afterglow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really yeah. enjoyed that, by the way. Oh, you liked that? Yeah. That's so um, and speaking speaking of which, I don't I don't know what you what you got there sitting next to your computer or whatever. But if if you, if yeah, if you have your would, would you like to play? You got anything? Do you want to you play pick some for us or? Uh, you just oh. want to talk. I mean, we're happy to just talk, sit here and talk with you, Jackie. But we'd love to hear I, you live. If if hey. you want if you want to play something for, for us live, you're more than welcome. Um. <laughs> and, yeah, don't want to put no put no, the spot. no <laughs> pressure. No pressure. We can sit here and just talk. That's fine. <laughs> well, don't you guys have any questions? Oh, oh yeah, of course. I, we have look, plenty of questions. <laughs> I got man. How long is it gonna go? I got three pages of uh, stuff here that, that, that I've been collecting over the last couple of weeks. Um, there was there was a show that I saw you go on. It was uh, 512 Studios Live, season three, oh, episode yeah, one. Oh, yeah, 512 Studios. Featuring, yep. yeah, featuring Jackie Vinson. Um, and I kind of got the feeling from, from watching that, at, at least the first the first cut, that, that you just walked right in there and and did, the, and did it from... Like you, you didn't do any, any, any second take. Just you walked in there and did the song. Uh, it was totally live. That was filmed live. There was like even like spots of it that were kind of like not rough, but you can tell that like if I would have had time to do another take, I would have just done another take. No, that was we did. We went in. We had an hour. We recorded like a set, and then I did an interview, and then that was it. What's your What's your favorite song to perform? Solo or with band? Both. Solo, I really love playing that song, Run. I, I played it yesterday um, first. With the band, um, I'm going to have to say, like, probably Transcends. Yeah, that's a good one, because it's like this pretty hard rock song. I like it. So when I, was, fun, when, solo. <laughs> when I was watching the show that, that you were you featured on, I, I got to admit, I kind of, like, waited in between all the little promos so I could hear your stuff. It's kind of like yeah. it's kind of like watching um, SNL just for the musical guest. Yeah. You know, would <laughs> you, you you aspire to do anything like anything like that? Would you like to do SNL someday? Be a musical yeah. guest or uh, who wouldn't? Yeah. I want to do all the late shows. Yeah, too. Right? <laughs> you you want to do all you want to do all that stuff, huh? No, I don't would have you, time. For would, that. You like to do, do <laughs> would you like to do the skit? Would you like to do the skit or just be a musical guest on something like Saturday Night Live? I, I don't care. I I want to. I want to be on national TV. I don't care some, if it's Saturday Night Live. You or got some like, acting chops. Okay, you've been on national TV because I saw you. I want playing, to be on national playing, TV as me, and I want as time. you. Though. Yes, as you, just by yourself and being yeah. featured, Jackie Vincent. Nice yes, stuff. I as did, me, but I, I, it was, it was really cool though to see you on the Colbert, the Colbert show. That was cool. I mean, that was a really cool experience. I ain't gonna deny anything like that, but I would like to just be me on one of those shows for a change. <laughs> But, that'd be okay. a, that'd be huge. Speaking of that appearance, though, that 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 show were you were you part of one of one of those guys' bands, or were they doing a a, a, a duo thing, a tour there? What what was happening? You mean there? Like Anderson Pack? Well, it was um, Mac Miller and, Mac and um, what was the other fellow's name? I'm not familiar with it. it. Did the song, dang. Yeah, right? it was Anderson Pack and Mac and, Miller. And Matt, okay, were you with? Were you guys doing a, a tour, or were you with one of those guys at the time in their band? Or uh, they didn't have a band, and they wanted to play their song, and they didn't want to bring a band, ah. so asked the house band of the Late Show to learn their song, and so we learned their song and played it behind. Them. So were you you were in the the house band for a little while? Um, just for five episodes. <laughs> for, uh, well, you hey, you know what? Five episodes. That's, that's about, a big deal. About, uh, yeah. <laughs> That is a very I mean, big deal, Jackie. It was, Come on, to be on national TV, that was cool, but it Pop. wasn't like a, it wasn't like screen time, serious screen time for me. I had like maybe four seconds where they kind of zoomed in on me. <laughs> what was that? Of what was that guitarist video. used to do, used to do the, the? He was the band leader for um, um, Lena Leno. I think it was Paul Schaefer. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. It wasn't Schaefer, was it? That was that was Letterman. Oh, oh yeah, he was a guitar Letterman. player. He played like like jazz guitar or whatever. I don't know, but but. Kevin something I don't know any anyway he used to get a lot of used to get a lot of screen time you know he yeah smile the leader and, of the band does yeah the leader of the band yeah 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 not the he, band he, the band he, gets he, like two like a second after the commercial like when you're going to the commercial break yeah. they'll do like a 
boom out. And then you get to see the whole band is like, boom, Ford commercial. And then Ford. when the, uh, do you, do when the like uh, show like... comes back in, it's like, you know, as soon as the Wendy's commercial ends, it's like, zoom in, boom, Stephen Colbert. You know, it's like one second. But, but where I really got a lot of screen time was with Anderson Pack and Mac Miller. That was awesome. They gave me a bunch of screen time. They put me in the center of the stage. It was pretty cool. And I got to sing background vocals. And you can really hear my voice. It's weird. They did not turn up John Batiste's voice on that. And I found that really strange. I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you can like was, only hear me. Was he having a bad day? Maybe he was I mean, having I'm, a I'm bad gonna, day. I'm not going to complain or anything, but I'm just like, whose side are you on here, man? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, like he's, he's the Obviously, regular. they were on your yeah. side. You were, you were the star that day. I guess so. But that was that was by far the most screen time I got in that circumstance. Um, otherwise, it was just like commercial break, commercial break, you know. But really, what was really valuable for me was not like the the glory. I guess it was the um, it was just being able to see it. Who, who gets to see like from backstage how these shows are made and run? You know, I was able to hang out in the studio all day. They told me to get there at like 10 a.m. for hair and makeup, but then there'd be like this three hour break between 10 a.m. and when we actually started shooting. And I I got to walk around the theater. I got to walk down the halls. I got to go on the roof and look at Times Square. You know, I was just like, that sounds very cool. In. I got you're, to watch Regina Spector's sound check. You're on the cool. roof in Times Square in New York City. That, that's pretty awesome. Oh, like, well, I'm on the roof of the Ed Sullivan Theater and I'm looking at Times Square. That was yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that was really crazy. And there, and then I got to hang out with, uh, with the band a little bit. That was really neat. And um, the experience was really, really phenomenal. Because, like, people stand in line just to be in the studio audience. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, I got to be there and play in the band, but really just be there. That was really cool. Well, I do have uh, one one question for you about about that. Because it it does seem to that seems to me that it's changing a little bit with especially with some big name musicians becoming uh, the house band like Questlove. You know, he's yeah, huge. Reggie Watts. Reggie Watts. I love that guy. Did you ever watch him on yes. Comedy Bang Bang? Oh man, he's been in so many awesome things. I've never seen that, but I have seen some of his oh, stand up. He's, he's so really hilarious. Good. Yeah, he's hilarious and can make wonderful music. And he, he loops. He loops like a mofo, man. He's cool. He's, <laughs> he man, does he's vocal re- loops. Really quick with the, with those uh, with those electronics, man. He's lightning yeah. fast. Indeed. You think you could ever, you think you could keep up with him and you know do a little competition, quip, quips back and forth, keep a song going. I'm, I'm, <laughs> almost like good. a. It wouldn't be a like competition a, though. It'd probably be more of a collaboration. Like a rap battle kind of thing, you know. But you you'd be doing your little vocal loops. Licks. And, <laughs> yeah, lick. Yeah, lick, little lick vocals, and that sounds like I probably a lot of fun. couldn't keep up with him on like last. He comes up with these last minute ideas, and he just that guy can improv really really well he could just like freestyle rap that's the kind of stuff i'm not very good at i I could freestyle play a guitar solo but um he he comes up with these freestyle raps and they are so funny and then he like has the loops to accompany them he's just got it all together man he's awesome he doesn't even actually have to speak he can do the whole uh michael winslow thing too and just make crazy sounds yeah the other thing he makes really weird noises he's He's pretty awesome. I saw. I can understand work. why you want to hire him to do your late show music. He's he's perfect for it. Well, do you, do you think you could? There's a spot in there for a a blues guitarist, Jackie Vincent, yeah. on, on on a, a you know a hot make late night way. TV show. You know, I'm you sure could. that I could make my own way. I don't really know how it how it is. I don't know. I wasn't able to be in the meetings. Like John would go into meetings with the writers. I wasn't able to go in those meetings, obviously. So I don't really know how they decide uh, on the music or what's going to be played. It probably has a lot to do with like licensing and that stuff. So I don't know if I would do covers or not. I don't think Reggie Watts ever does any covers. I think he's just doing his thing, and they're just. I th- I think if he if he did do a cover, it would have to be something like psychedelic rock that he could just go off on and and yeah. just riff and jam for a while and then come back to it. And then it's third stone from the stun, you know, from Hendrix. Yeah. Or he could just take a pop song and turn it into that. But honestly, with covers, it's complicated because how much do you have to pay to be able to even play that song? Because it's not our song or not my song. So I don't really know. But I do know that every single time I see a, a 
like a band leader. They do their, they, they are themselves. So like John does covers, but they're, but he does them in a jazzy way or they're all jazz covers. And John is a jazz guy. That's, that's like his, that's his thing. Not that he can't do anything, but that's like his passion. You know, that's what he loves. And, and, um, so they, the sound of the house band for the late show is catered to the style of the leader anyway. So if I was asked to be the band leader of a house band, I would really just need to experience it. I'd probably need somebody to coach me a little bit on how to do it, but then eventually I'd probably fall into a a, a character, you know? Speaking of a band, do you have a, a solid lineup right now? Or are you kind of fluid with who you're playing with? or do you, oh, are, Yeah, I do. I play with Rodney. He's my drummer. And then I have a bass player. His name's Nick Clark. He's my main bass player. But he's been working with Kanye West lately, so he's been kind of busy. So it's really just been me and Rodney, and then the sampler does all the bass parts. <laughs> it's pretty rad. It sounds like a four-piece band, nice. <laughs> even though it's just me and Rodney. You can do a lot with with <laughs> electronics, you know. Me. So are you uh, are you gonna be in DFW anytime soon? Yeah. Can, can when can we yeah. see you? When you can know? we see you live? Where, I, I know we I know we can I know we can come to Austin, but we're we we're we're in, in DFW, DFW. A lot coming up. I'm playing on April 13th in Dallas at the Homegrown Fest. I'm actually going to have Rodney and Nick for that, most likely. And um, then I'm going to be playing July 6th at Rockin' the River uh, in Fort Worth at Panther Island Pavilion. July 6th at Panther Island. Wow, that's uh, July 6th is my kid's birthday. That sounds like a good time. I think I'm, we might oh, have yeah. to get it's, some... a it's a whole festival where you like float on the river and watch bands. It's actually the perfect place for a kid. There's a bunch of kids there. We'll have to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah, and and well, the the other appearance as well. Would would, would you say it was? Um, Homegrown Fest on April thirteenth. April thirteenth. I haven't 13th. July date on my calendar yet, but the Homegrown Fest I just put on my calendar today, so that's all on there. I don't know what time I go on yet, but they, if you go to their website like close to the event, they probably list the lineup times. Hopefully, I'll be able to get some time off and, and make it to that one. I want to take a moment to ad address our chat room. Welcome to the broadcast, everybody who's joining. Uh, if you yeah. guys have any questions for Jackie, feel free to type them in chat. I'll relay them. I don't think she's watching chat. so uh, No, I can't see it. Play rolling, play rolling and tumbling. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's now a request. <laughs> you guys asked if I could figure out a way to play something, and I said, I don't know. And then now the fan wants it, so that changes everything. See, and that was well, a very specific we, request that I can do on the acoustic guitar. But you'd have to give me like ten seconds to get my acoustic guitar. It's over you there. You have all the time in the yeah, world, the Jackie. Okay, I'm gonna you want. watch. I come back like three hours later. All well, right, you ready to play? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Krieger, her hair is awesome. Does she not remind you of Radon Chong? A little. That with especially with the hair. The hair, definitely. What's up, Casil? Welcome to the broadcast. How are Kassil. you? Casil. Casil. Yeah, I have. I, I've been ignoring the chat too. I've, I've been over here looking at my computer screen and my my little notes over here. So, uh, what, all right. What, what, Can I show you a very specific picture of Radon Chong and actually a story about that? That's you heard that. <laughs> you heard it. You heard that. Yes, you can show us okay. whatever you like. That, that's, that's, a, like, that's a lovely see, painting behind you, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Naked yeah. lady. Yeah, we're glad, okay. we're glad that's artistic. I hope I hope you yeah. guys are titty yeah, supporters. We're, we're good. We are. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Support the titties. We love breastuses. Breastuses. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or so breast it's really funny. This, these, uh, this old guy comes up to me. He's probably like, I don't know, 70-something. He comes up to me in New York, and he's like, did anyone ever tell you you look like Radon Chung? Let me give you a drink. <laughs> or let me buy you a drink. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, who? Literally, like, like, it's a blub blub. You're thinking who? So then I can't be mean because he's like seventy something, and I can't be just I can't be mean to old people, man. No matter how weird they are or crazy they are, I can't be mean to old people. It doesn't feel right. So he's like buying me a drink, and I'm like creeped out. And then I'm like nonchalantly looking up right on Chong because I don't really know what she looks like at this time. Yeah. And then I find this picture and I'm like, holy crap, I look exactly like Ray on Chong. <laughs> <laughs> like exactly like her. I was like, this guy nailed it. I, I look 
I'm looking at her and I'm me and I'm telling you I look like her. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. See, she look, I can. So, I should just take a picture like. And you could be an impersonator. You could put nice, see next that, to her. That, there's another career move. You could be an impersonator too. You know. Oh no! I'm gonna be a Sade impersonator because I actually, if I try, I can Which, actually sound just like Sade. Love and, Sade. And, you know, I'm like light skinned, so I so I like look like her enough to where if I also sound like her, all I gotta do is slick my hair back and then just like do those like sexy dances. Right. Just the, sound the, like the her. Sho- the, a, lot of, a lot of a lot of shoulder movement. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. A lot of shoulder <laughs> movements. Anyway, so someone requested a uh, rolling and tumbling. Please. Maybe I should back it up so you can see my hands. Hold on. You don't. Right, you then. don't have to, Jackie. That that's great, but you don't have to. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> well, I rolled in the tumble, cried a whole day through. There we go. Well, I rolled in the tumble, cried a whole day through. Thank you. All right. Beautiful. No I don't wow. know what the quality of this is like, but whatever. It, it was great. It was wonderful <laughs> it was quality. Excellent. It, it, you know, and sometimes it, it, and I know when you're doing an interview, it, not everybody wants to be asked to do what they do professionally. Like, if you ever, you ever, you ever date someone who's a cook, or a, I dated a baker once. She'd never cook for me. So we, I refuse to date masseuses because I'm addicted to massages and I would just drive them nuts <laughs> asking for massage every freaking night. So we, like, we, oh, my hand hurts so much from all the digging yeah. I did today. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we wouldn't want you to feel uncomfortable about, about <laughs> playing, but please feel free to free to, to play as much as you want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, awesome. I would, my hands are really cold right now. And also, I have been like answering booking emails all day. So I'm just in this really like... Like state of mind. Well, one song was wonderful. Was Thank you very much. <laughs> no problem. But if somebody else, but the fans, you know, when the fans ask for a song, especially when it's one of my songs, I have 
to play it because it's like that never happens to me. Nobody well, ever no, requests well, my songs. I, well, then I guess I got to say this, Jackie. My favorite so- song so far is Always Free. All right. I can do Always Free. Yes. You might the a big gro- baby man, baby. The, gr- the groove, <laughs> the way you sing it. Like, you know, we talked about the acoustics of the mouth. It's just amazing. Yeah, like this mouth shape. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can do that. Not for very long. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm trying. I can't do it. I don't, even wanna, like, I don't even want to try. That's kind of like one of those smiles that kids have that they that they do in pictures before they really learn to smile in pictures. Like, smile for mom. And they do that oh. scary look. Yeah. Yes. There it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. So, okay. So, always free. The acoustic version. Please. if you Yes. If you would like like to play for us. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll play you always for the acoustic version, but I'm gonna take a vape, I'm gonna take a vape tip off off screen first so people don't judge me. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, can, can we do that too? Yep. You sure can. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So the acoustic version does not have the ripping uh, psychedelic solo, you know. But it has all the singing parts. So I've I've actually been learning this one. Yeah. Without the guitar solo, that's All honestly right. how Beautiful. Long it Thank is. you. <laughs> yeah, it's a guitar Loving solo. So let's just be real. <laughs> wow. Well, we we can have it sans guitar solo because that's that's a great it's a great song. It's got like I said, it's got a great groove. Oh yeah, it's a good. It's definitely a good groove. And if I had like a, if I had like a sax player or a loop pedal. When I uh, cool. when I w- listened to that song for the first time. I was blown away. It's such a good song. I went and got my guitar and I played along with you in your, in like what? with the song. Yes. Jam on, man. Jam on. I was on. like, this, I can, I can solo to this. This is good. You're like, this is speaking to me. Yes. I understand. I felt that way about a lot of buddy guy stuff. Just Absolutely. jammed along with his acoustic stuff because I was like, I need to sound better when I play the acoustic guitar. So I jammed along with buddy guy for like an album or two. It, it definitely. <laughs> It, I learned stuff. It was nice. I hear Buddy Guy a lot in in your licks. Is, is he oh, a yeah, big sure. influence on you? Yes, he's my favorite guitar player. <laughs> favorite, sure. hands down. Huh? Yeah, hands down. He's my favorite guitar player. And oh. uh, close second is probably Eric Gales. Yes, Eric Gales, wonderful guitar. I yeah. love the way he plays guitar. He's 
It's up the upside Eric. down, backwards. What is that? Is that Eric Gale? Is that the right guy? Yeah, I don't okay. know. I haven't really looked into the neck. It looks like a lefty, um, but I don't know. Sometimes they make right guitar, righty guitars look like lefty guitars just to be cool. So I don't really know. But he might be a lefty. I think I've heard that he's a lefty. Yeah, I think he's a lefty, and he's playing an actual righty. It's not really strong. Flipped. Yeah. Yeah, my friend uh, my friend Darius does that. Darius is rad. Pretty much everyone I know who does that is rad. So I'm starting to think, hmm. Chat's asking about uh, Stevie Ray Bond. Yeah, being being Texas Blues, uh, you, there's got to be. Awesome. He's you got to awesome. love it. There's got to be an influence on your music, right? I don't know if it's an influence. I don't listen to him consistently. I've heard his famous songs, but I've never actually really listened to him. So I don't know if I can say that's an influence directly, but it's like with music, there's just no way to track it. Like he might have influenced Eric Gales, who influences me. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, maybe just because I'm in Texas. But well, I, I saw you with, with some performances with with Gary Clark Jr. Um, did you enjoy being on uh, playing with him? Uh, what your relationship were like as you you guys friends, or was that was just a gig and you did your thing and you went back home? I'd say we're colleagues. Colleagues. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I can't say um, friends. We've not, never hung not, out. Not a outside. friend, but an associate. Yes, right? he's an associate. He knows but he did name. a lot of really. He he did a lot for me, letting me go on tour with him. So that was a uh, that was really great of him to do. He, I gained a lot from that. So I'm eternally grateful. But we don't hang out, so I can't. Say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am though. I said that jokingly, but I wasn't joking. <laughs> I am eternally grateful for the things he did for me in my career at the time. Um, but story I can't say we're friends. Like, we don't hang out. H friends hang out, so I can't say we're yeah. friends. Yeah. It's not somebody you, you can't – you couldn't call him in the middle of the night or he wouldn't help you hide a dead body or anything. <laughs> what? No. But I do have his phone number, and every now and then when he does hey. something cool, I send him a text message and say, hey, congrats, that was cool. That's sweet. And then he replies and says, thanks, Jackie. <laughs> so Jackie, I, That's I kind of the extent of our conversations. <laughs> got a guitar question for you. And, and a lot of your videos, I see, I see you with a strat, mm -hmm. all, pretty much all the time. Is, yep, the is white the, strat. That's your main. You, you, call it, you call it? Is it Herbie? Herbie. 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 I, I just got to be back. It's got new frets. I, I noticed that I, I, cause, because you know this the show that you did. It, so how how are the frets now? You 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 liking it better? I think so. I only played Herbie for I picked up I picked up Herbie yesterday in the early afternoon and then I did two streams. So I played for two hours on Herbie yesterday. And uh I didn't notice a difference. The neck looks different. Like it's not as dark as it was. But maybe that was just the lights. But the guitar feels good. It's definitely the same guitar. So okay. I, I look for all the, the scratches, make where, sure that everything tell, was. Where did the name Herbie come from, Jackie? I love Herbie Hancock. Herbie Hancock. Herbie Hancock. That's Hancock. what I was thinking, Herbie Hancock. That's what oh, yeah. chat, that chat, chat said it right before you said it. No, that you said it. That was me. In chat. Yeah, because I was, I was talking to one of the people in chat. Um, okay, so the, the backup guitar that you used in the one episode, what's yes. that guitar's name? What's that one? Blue. That's just blue? Okay, mm -hmm. blue that's a good guitar. Um, it's not as good as Herbie. It's like 95% as good as Herbie. Like if yeah. something were to happen to Herbie, heaven forbid, and I had to make that guitar my main axe, it wouldn't be the end of the world. My boy but, Blue is there. Right. But uh, it would, uh, I'd be very sad if I couldn't ever play Herbie again. Like I, if I, if it's my choice, I'm always going to choose to play Herbie. And then I'll just play Blue whenever I'm playing in a different tuning. And by a different tuning, I mean drop D. That's the only other tuning I play in. <laughs> but, right. Yeah, well, Herbie. Uh, other than is, that, is, I just have blue it, there for when it, I break a string on Herbie. Is it specifically Herbie that you love, or is it is there something special about Strats that that means it's something specific. to you? Specifically, Herbie. Yeah, there's something about that guitar. I I don't understand why it sounds the way it sounds. I don't think there's any way to recreate it. That's the other thing. And the first time I I tried that guitar out, it like spoke to me. Well, it like literally. So in the, my head was like the, the guitar hey. picked you yeah the guitar was like hey buy me and i'll bring you to the next level sweet 
Well, no, no two guitars sound the same. And uh, I might have been vaping along the way to that uh, music store, but I'm just saying. <laughs> That's, that's neither here nor there. Uh, um, it's neither here nor there. When you when you when you hear <laughs> when you hear, it spoke to me, you know, man. Some and the craziest could... thing is, oh my god, I have a real story. So, I used to play this other guitar, it was a Green Strat, and I thought I liked that guitar, but I really just when I bought it, I was probably only two and a half years into playing, so I didn't really really know what I was looking for. I just knew I wanted a better guitar than the one I had because the other one wouldn't stay in tune. So that guitar, I played that guitar for about two and a half years, the Green guitar. And um, I liked it, but I didn't feel like it was like, if I lose this guitar, I am going to be devastated. I didn't feel that way about it. Um, so I played a gig a week before I recorded the live album Strange Brew, the live at Strange Brew album, I mean. And um, I bought Herbie the night before uh, the live at Strange Brew album, and I used Herbie on the live at Strange Brew album only. So... I found a recording of this show I did a week before and I'm serious. My guitar playing, it sounds like a different person playing the green guitar. than it was than the person playing Herbie and I, I sounded better. I, I was doing stuff that I had never done before. Like I was bending strings and doing like inflections on notes during my solos and also like designing the solo differently. Like, Hey, this is where the solo starts, and this is the middle of the solo. And now the, like the the solos had direction, and in this show a week before, not on Herbie, the solos were like, just notes, like, hey, this note works, so I just I'll play it. Do you think you sometimes know, there was no direction, there was no melody leading, there was nothing. And then a think... week later, I'm playing Herbie, and I have I have the recordings from that show a week before Herbie in that show on Herbie. Do you, it's think a sometimes stark the, do you think sometimes your guitar tells you what notes to play? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like the vibrations of the wood going into my stomach. The like, one chooses the wizard, Harry. <laughs> man, I don't know. I'm just saying that I have two recordings, one before Herbie and one after Herbie, and they're only a week apart, and I sound totally different. Okay, I get. I got a, a Herbie. I got a Herbie question for you. Okay. okay. So, one of these days, you get sponsored, and mm -hmm. they want to make your guitars from there on. Could you, would you give them Herbie so they could try to recreate that in one of their guitars for you so you'd be happy playing their stuff? What do you mean by give them Herbie? Like they like, are the, able to take them apart and do stuff to them, if, or they're just they, gonna if they want to see, stuff to if they want to recreate, they want to see how the coils are, are are wound. You know, see how the the electronics are together. Would could you do she that? No. Could you, you couldn't do it? You're nah, like, nope, sorry like, guys, you, you just gotta figure it out on your own. I might play your guitar if it sounds okay, but I'm sticking yes, with Herbie. I might play it for like a video or something, but I. I don't want to play any other guitar. But you wouldn't do and a Nam show and, and turn and go straight to you know Ibanez or whatever if they tried if they tried to recreate at the Nam show and I'd be like yeah I'll come to your booth and I'll play in your booth and I'll play your guitars and if I do a showcase um, maybe I'll play your guitar for that showcase at Nam for this year and then if you want anything else besides that probably not. But it's Herbie. <laughs> it's all about Herbie. Tell me about well, your. Uh, I, lo I love loyalty. I like you even more now, Jackie. Thank you. No, it's not that. It's just that, like, I only. The only thing that keeps me going through all of the crap that I have to put up with in this music business is the fact that I love to play music. I love how it feels to play and sing my music. And I love how Herbie feels and sounds. And the sound heals me. So it's like I say, let's say I go through like a really big rejection, but I always feel better about anything that's happened to me regarding my career after I've played a show. If I go too long without playing a show, I get really depressed. That's why I started this live stream because I don't have a lot of gigs leading up to the Paramount Theater because I want to, um, I don't want to oversaturate Austin. I want people to come to that show. <laughs> you know, you should so I can't definitely a lot look, of shows. You should look into Caffeine TV for live streaming. It's amazing. Absolutely well, amazing. Or you can always join us. Or you can always hang out with us. <laughs> true. But so like you... what I was saying is like um, 
the only thing that makes all of this worth it is playing writing and playing the music. And so if I can't write and play the music the way I want to do it, what if, what am I even doing anymore? But so, then, then it just turns into a job that I don't want to do. So I might as well just go work at Starbucks. Well, that was one of those things that one of the questions I was also going to ask you if, if, if it came to when they, they wanted to sign you and, but they want to drop the blues. They want you to just do the pop songs. Could you do that? Or do you have to control, maintain control of your music, your, your style? It, it would be a discussion. If they didn't want me, what would they mean? Did they mean that I don't release any more blues songs on recordings? Um, that well, could you be know, I, I, I just dreamed these question up and that Jackie, um, I haven't put that much it, thought into it. Yes. It would be a discussion, but like if, if they mean like I never play the blues again, well, that that would be them just putting a restriction on me as a human being. And no, I'm not going to give up my freedoms. But if let's say they let's say it's like, a record company, just, just, not, on, just hey, not on the record. Right. Yeah. They're like, hey, we want to do a record with you and we're going to pay for the record and we're going to pay for the promotion and we're going to organize the tour and we're going to do all of the work that's making your hair turn gray. Um, mm-hmm. And in return you can't really do any hard blues on that record. It's, it's gotta be like, we really want it to be mostly pop and, and rock. I'd be like, they, all they right. Want it, they want the formula so they can put yeah. it on the radio. You, you could do it. Do you think? Yeah, because I can always, the formula is not that strict. The formula is like three to three to three and a half minutes. Catchy hook. Um, this producer if and I you, don't get along with the producer, do that, producer right? I do it. If I don't look, if, if they choose the producer and I don't like the producer and I don't like his vibe, I won't do it. I would like to, uh, I would like to circle back around to the guitars that you use. We, you haven't said anything about the acoustics. Yeah, w- oh, I'm, I'm I a big acoustic Taylor. guitar player. And guess what? Here's a good news the for acoustic guitar makers. It's a Taylor. I, I guessed right. I guessed it was yeah. a Taylor. So I, I play with it's a, a good thing for acoustic guitar people. I'm not crazy about. I like this acoustic guitar a lot, but I'm not like endlessly loyal to it if anyone's gonna like want to be a guitar sponsor for me i would be open to the acoustic guitar so because so I, that I so that, that taylor I, is not it's not like herbie well i'm oh hell no i, ha- I have a 1978 <laughs> ovation that i am extremely loyal to uh it I'm, was it was one of the last few american-made ovations and it, it the tone is absolutely gorgeous it is and you just beautiful can't tone. like it's not like no guitar, no, no you other guitar. Reproduce worth playing. that sound. You cannot reproduce that sound. You can't. You can't. And like also, Herbie still talks to me. He doesn't say the same things he used to say, but he still talks to me. Does it? Does Most, Herbie talk to you while just while you're holding him, or while you're doing you know, a, a video? When, like when you did. When I'm sounding notes on him, he talks to me. He's like, "Hey." Screw that booking agent. He doesn't even know what he's missing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then he's like, you know what? Why don't you play Run? You love that song. And I'm like, you know what, Herbie? That's a good idea. And Herbie's like, hey, you haven't worked on your upper register uh, riffs in a while. So how about you play Run, start that loop, and let's work on some let's work on some sweeps. I'm like, okay. Beautiful. Really? I mean, I know it sounds it, obviously. No, I you can't, I know exactly I, what you mean. I like exactly I'll pick up the good, you... the reason why I'm saying like he talks to me is because I'll go into the room and know that I need to work on music or know that I have time, right? So I'll go into the room and I'm like thinking about the last thing I did. I'm not thinking about practicing. I just know that I need to practice. So I'll go into the room and I'll put Herbie on and within 30 seconds I'm like, "Oh, I need to work on this." And it's like I'm reminded of all the stuff I really need to work on and and that's what I mean by Herbie talks to me <laughs> cuz like it comes out of nowhere without any pre-thought. I just put the guitar on. I could have been like thinking about cheeseburgers for God's sakes. I could have like just narrowly missed a car accident and I put on the the guitar and the guitar's like we're going to fight. It's like comes out of nowhere. <laughs> it, that's it's, not, it's like it's like uh, so Herbie's got like a, a heads up display and tells you tells you what yeah. to do this and and is your like your musical uh personal what do you call them uh I hate it when I lose words like that. When when you stay, how how do you stay organized? An organizer, like yeah, her, like secretary. Herbie's like your guitar organizer. Yeah, it's like, you know, a lot of people. I I really have a strong theory that most people don't 
practice and learn instruments because they can't handle the day to day. They, they want to already be learned and they don't want to accept that it's going to take years for them to learn how to play even right. just one song. Instant sometimes. gratification. They want instant gratification. No, they don't want, they, and they're unable to see day to day progress They They get mad that they can't play the song and they don't realize that they just played the song through by memory. Even, even though they stumbled through it, they still played it through by memory. It's like, you couldn't do that last week. Like people don't want to, people don't respect the progress of a baby step. They just don't Did, um, anymore. I think and people so, would, um, would do so much better with a little encouragement from time to time from the outside. So you do. Yeah. Also hear. support systems are a huge deal, but Did I think you? the main thing is that people get overwhelmed by the in, end product. And so that's what stops people from practicing. They don't even pick the guitar up in the first place because they're so overwhelmed by all the Fear. stuff they need to learn. Right. Yeah, right. Over, they're overwhelmed. So I'll up Herbie, I don't know what to practice either. I really don't. I mean, I still don't know. And I put Herbie on and the, uh, it d- takes like 10 seconds. All I got to do is just put the guitar on. It's weird. Did you buy Herbie so, new or does yeah. it have a, does it have a history? So it's always been yours. Yes. Herbie has always been yours. Okay. I bought it like two months after it was shipped to guitar center. There's some, uh, conspiracy theories in the chat that possibly the guitar belonged to some great musician and they died and their spirit is in the guitar and helps you <laughs> talk to you that way. No, that's like, still possible. Or like, that's still about, like, possible. like the pick of destiny. Do you ever see that with the, <laughs> the pick of destiny? Yeah. It's an HSD. <laughs> yeah. So your, your guitar is imbued with the, with the, the soul of Satan. <laughs> oh no, bad. <laughs> right. That's that's the one with uh, with tribute on it, right? <laughs> right. Tri- yes, tribute. Right. I love that song. This isn't the greatest song in the world. This is just a tribute to the greatest song in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why it's just a tribute is because we don't really remember what we played. <laughs> well, it's a really great. Probably, song. and they're, they're probably scared of getting in trouble for uh, playing too many uh, like too many Le- Zeppelin esque li- licks and getting sued. Yeah, exactly. They're just like mocking everybody. Like, yeah. screw you. The song is just like a, a huge middle finger. At, yeah. at, at one time, Led Zeppelin would not license their music for anything. And then just, I guess yeah. it was like they hit a wall and all of a sudden they're, it's everywhere. But I think yeah. it was Jack Black that actually cracked that egg. With I Spiel hope Rock. so, because like, it's like, why do you want your music to die? <laughs> I don't get it. No, we don't want music to die. No. Yeah, Especially I'm just saying, like refusing, refusing licensing, refusing exposure for your music is, is like setting it up to die. Like no one's gonna know. All the kids aren't gonna know who you are, which is not a good thing. Kids need to know who Led Zeppelin is. You know. So. Yeah, that makes me makes you totally think of that uh, school of rock. It's like you guys don't know who these people are. You don't know who Motorhead is. You don't know Led Zeppelin. Because they don't hear it, and it's and it's not. It's not in their media that they watch. You ever see those videos of kids, their reaction to like when they play Kiss songs for them or they play uh, yeah, they like hair them. Band. You like those? They, I've seen kid, kids react to videos and they like the songs. They right. showed them Michael Jackson and all the kids were like, this is great. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, like, he's like, yeah. Oh, oh, by the like, way, guys, he's gone now. There won't be any more of that. That, that's, that could really end their also, day. No. He's gone, but also you have like 20 albums to catch up on. Don't worry about it. True. There is a, a, an, an immense amount of material there. Speaking yeah. of, of, of amount of material, are, are, you, are you writing right now? Are you building your um, catalog? Yeah, you what's, got, you what's got a new, new record coming out, right? You, can, you got a yes. new record coming Pro out. Fit. Say it again. Pro Fit? April 5th. April 5th. April 5th. Yes. It's an album. It's called Joy. Joy. It's going to come out on April 5th, and then I'm having the album release show at the Paramount Theater in Austin, Texas on April 12th. Can we expect to hear some of that that beautiful ju- uh, ju- that beautiful <laughs> what? That, that I was trying to mix the word jazz and blues at the same time. That beautiful blues. <laughs> you almost said something Those really be- weird. Yeah, I did. That- <laughs> Thank goodness the beautiful blues the riffs. Think, can, think. can we expect beautiful blues riffs that you you are known for? <laughs> album is all over the place there's some serious solos in there like um rolling and tumbling's on on it uh but it's a studio version that you hadn't heard yet so it's like it's it's blues and like synthesizers 
And um, there's a big solo on that one. There's a big solo on Don't Lie to Me, which is a reggae. Which there's a big I, solo on, a, on Witchcraft. Great song. Which Don't Lie to Me is a good one. Yeah. There's a big solo on uh, on Never Say Die that has a solo. So there's there's like, it's a studio album and all the songs are like three to five minutes. Some of them are two minutes and 57 seconds, like radio edits. But what people don't understand is that just because it's, you know, pop and mainstream doesn't mean there's not any room for a guitar solo. You just have to be smarter about where you put it. So was that a Goonies movie reference? Goonies never say die. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, but I, I do love that movie. But it's not a it's not a reference. Yeah, you're it was more old, like you're... a I survived <laughs> my month in New York yeah, reference. You're not old enough to know that movie. Maybe you watched you saw your dad or mom watch it. <laughs> yeah. True. If you haven't watched it, you should. It's a classic. Is this smashed radio. Yeah, we smashed be radio. Oh yeah, we we also Yeah, we have a uh, a radio show. We on simulcast on Sundays on Get Smash Radio Broadcasting Radio One. Nice, I can yeah, dig it. They radio. have, they have a uh, an app kind of like you know iHeartRadio that that kind of gig. So what flavor is your vape? It is like Skittles. It tastes like it oh, tastes like some one. kind of cross between that's Fruit Loops and one. Skittles. That's a good one. I just got a uh, blueberry. The, yeah, the, well, yeah, you did just get a blueberry, but we haven't tasted it yet. <laughs> I had this thing when I was in. Ve- I went to Vegas over over Halloween, and the the the, the vape tip this guy sold me in the, the dispensary. It's called Unicorn Piss. Unicorn Piss. <laughs> and I tell you, I, let me tell you, that doesn't Reminds sound like one I want to taste. I, I was very excited. I was so excited. I had the container open and plugged into <laughs> the the battery before I even left the 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 parking lot, and. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting so, name. Interesting name. Name is appropriate then? It, appropriate. It's, yes. The experience. It was very appropriate and uh, man that locked me in. I I was I was driving for hours. <laughs> I had a hotel and everything waiting for me, but no, I'm I'm striving. You're like, "No, I'm just going to go straight through, man. I'm on this unicorn piss. I am up." <laughs> yeah. I had a nice rental car and I love I love Las That's Vegas. I I lived I I lived there. Unicorn piss. I got monster. I'm good. Yeah. Good to go. I drove. I mean, I, I, I think I checked into the hotel at like 530 in the morning. I drove for. Oh, I know that life. There was this one drive from New York City to D.C. that my manager and I had to take. Dude, oh, we were switching I-95. every 40 minutes because one of us would only be able to drive 40 minutes before, like, starting to get to the point where we would fall asleep on the road and crash. Oh, so, no. like. I'd drive 40 minutes and then I'd feel my eyes get heavy and I'd pull over immediately. And then he'd drive 40. Cause like neither of us could stay awake for longer than 40 minutes. Yeah. Indica is not good for road trips. No, no, that wasn't it. It was just that we had to make this trip because we had to be out of the thing of the place we were staying in New York. And we left at like 1130 PM oh. and we oh, drove yeah. to DC. And it's like a five hour drive. So we were uh-huh. good for like, well, the first you were hauling ass. If you if you got to the last two, if you got to DC in in how many hours did you say? Five. It was like five Boy, or five and a half. Yeah. You guys were hauling ass as I've driven from DC to New York City. It was really hard, <laughs> and we were driving very fast because the forty minutes that we could be awake, we needed to make the best of it. So we were just like, and since it was the middle of the night, there was nobody on the road, so we were just flying. What did you What did it you think of What did you think of our nation's capital? Oh, I love it. It's awesome. Did you have time to look around or did you go there for a gig and play and leave? I did have time to look around. I went to the Monument Island or whatever it is and I saw the MLK monument. That was amazing. It was so good. Any they did Mr. such a good job. Any, any like, Smithsonian? There's nothing worse than them building a monument or like a memorial. And, and then it, it doesn't sucks. look like them? There's nothing worse than that. <laughs> yeah. The MLK one is profound. It really is. Did you get into any of the Smithsonian's? Yes. I went to the um, space one. Are the, they not mind blowing? Yeah. I, <laughs> I want to go back. I was only able to spend two hours in it, which is like 10 minutes in space museum time. So I need to go back. And then I went to the, I went to the black people museum. That was rad. I can only imagine. That was really rad. I very highly recommend the 
African American. I don't know what it's called. I've just been calling it the Black People Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Works I know for it me. sounds really bad and like not PC, but but it's like a museum with Black American history, and there's a bunch of really rad stuff in there. So it makes sense in my brain to call it the Black People Museum. <laughs> well, well, here on the pig stand, we are not PC, not, Jackie. Never. So. I mean it in an offensive way. It honestly is a museum containing all the greatest achievements of Black Americans ever since the nation uh, like started and it's really rad like every everybody knows everybody with a brain who's not living under a rock knows how important african americans are to american culture but you don't really truly realize the magnitude until you go into that museum you're like oh yeah like just looking at the music portion there's like while while we're in this thread while you're on this thread talk to us about uh black women in music Playing guitar because you were you were mentioning something about that when you're talking about your your award and doing your Thursday show. You, you, oh yeah, you, you sound like you, you really wanted to talk about it more. Like yeah, you had more unfortunately, to say. Uh, black women guitar players have been around a lot longer than people realize, and the reason for that is that they haven't been visible. You know, they don't they don't get talked about. Like they get induced into the Hall of Fame like a hundred years after they died. You know, right. like they don't they, ever get recognized while they're alive. Any of their family still, still alive, even? Hmm? They're like you said, any of their family alive still, at least still even, you know? Exactly. It's like, oh, cool. Like they care that you're finally telling them that they're great. You know, like it's it's just like this ongoing pattern of, of uh, I guess, mainstream media and just like even just basic music education just neglects how important black women have been to the progress of Southern blues and rock and, and, uh, so, you know, like, like genres. So I like one of the, one of the early, uh, blues women guitar players, who's amazing is Elizabeth Cotton. She like literally invented a style of playing. It's called cotton picking. I was listening to this just, just before I came over here for the show, actually. It's literally like people, and here's the here's the saddest thing. There are so many people who like cotton pick and they don't even realize they they don't even know who she is. And I'm like, you're playing her style. And then on, on the other end of that spectrum you have Lucille Bogan. Have you ever listened to any Lucille Bogan? No, I've not. She has a song called Shave 'em Dry. You should definitely listen to that song sometime. And there's yeah, Memphis Mini. Memphis Minnie oh, was yes. like so brave. She like sung about nasty stuff in that's, like the that's, 20s. So that's what Shave 'em Dry is about. Lucille Bogan was known for this one song, and it's called Shave 'em Dry, <laughs> and it is nasty. It, it is especially way nasty. the time we're talking about the early 1900s here. Well, what know? about the the non nasty ones like Sister Rosetta Tharp? Sister Rosetta Tharp uh, was actually chart topping, or charting at least. And charting in some pretty impressive numbers while she was alive. She's yeah, she was one of on, the people on the that show, was actually really shows. famous. She was really famous. She, yeah, she, she toured the world. She, she was amazing. TV. She lived a great life in music. But uh, she wasn't recognized by the Hall of Fame until like freaking 100 years later, which is insulting. And even though she was famous when she was alive, she should have been inducted when she was alive. And she wasn't. And... Uh, there's a lot of women out there. There's some that I don't even know about because I haven't done like years and years of research. I've done a lot of research, but not not like as much as I probably could. You know what I mean? But it's just well, a pattern, you, and it yeah, seems you, to happen you, you, these days. Like, and, you have uh, things to Chad, create. Chad is yeah. asking if you know who Lady Bo is. Lady Bo is no. I'll have to check uh to check out Lady Bo. Lady Bo. Lady Bo. Are they new? Is that contemporary? Is that old? Actually, cool? just got back from this conference in uh, Montreal, and I met this this guy who um, is really, really read up on the many, many overlooked black female musicians in rock and blues. And I just emailed him asking him, him to give me like a whole list of documentaries to watch. So this time, like, I don't know, next month, I'm going to be like a pro at this. But... I, I have done a lot of research on Rosetta Tharp and Elizabeth Cot Cotton and Memphis Minnie and and um, yeah, it's a problem, and it's something that I'm willing to kind of like represent and try and and change. Well, other other than doing uh, covers of their songs or trying to learn their styles, and 
what other way do you feel like you could you could get that out? Are are, are you a storyteller <laughs> when you play? In, like in between songs, you like to tell stories. Yeah, I can talk about it. I can I can use platforms like the one at the Awesome Music Awards to keep it in the foreground of people's minds. I can continue to grow in status, and then I can eventually make sure that that uh, there's a there's a opportunities available for black female musicians. There's a lot I could do. There's a lot that, that you could do, but and it's I also all about and what just me. And I work really hard, and I put myself out there. Just being me, just being another example for a younger girl who looks like me, just being an, an example for other people will also do a lot. But I plan to do more than just exist. Obviously, <laughs> I would like existing, to existing, nothing but existing. Yeah, Thank, I also yes. can when I go on tours, I can play for kids. I can go to their schools and perform at their schools, and you know. A kid being exposed to that just keeps the door open and keeps the seeds being planted. You know, absolutely. You when you get the get the kids while they're young and show them what music is all about. Yeah, and especially go to places where it's a, it's like maybe a neighborhood or a school that normally doesn't get that kind of opportunity because you know the music's being pulled out of schools these days. So I can oh, make absolutely. sure to make it schools that are maybe like inner city where they don't get to see that very often. Or they may not hear that style of music. You know, or they may not have ever seen a person that looks like me doing that. that. that that's right. You yeah. know, we, we, we did it. I mean, this is it's, it's not related to you at all, but it, it was about exposing children to things they'd never seen before. We did, we did a, a yeah. bit about uh, drag queen story time. Like they, there you go. I don't think there's anything wrong with that uh, exposure. See what's going on in the world. And they're very yeah. dramatic and what tell stories. And there. There are a lot of people who are triggered. Oh boy, they are. <laughs> Wouldn't they? Are they yeah, triggered? They 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 tie drag queen to something like gross or pornographic. Evil. Right, really exactly. They, not they, that. They tie it to evil. It's not that. I mean, like, I guess drag queen porn is that, but just drag queen is not gross. If you're if you're uh if you're willing to to uh have your kid go to like a pageant not be in the pageant but like see a pageant same or stuff. see a fashion show same if stuff. you're cool with your kids seeing a fashion show you should be able to be cool with your kids seeing drag queens because that's what they do they dress up and they're fabulous and they look amazing right it, just it's like this, anybody the same at a fashion kind of, show or at and like they occasionally kind of, trick me yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i just it's like it's not wrong for a man to want to dress up like that so if you're cool with women dressing up like that, you should be cool with men dressing up. Yeah, just be you. Exactly. And I think kids need to see other people being them, especially if they are different. Absolutely. But we're all different. Would you would you like to do or have you ever done that played music for kids? Would would you do the, oh, yeah. the rock? I play, thing I play music and... for kids all the time, as much as I can. As much as I possibly can. I played at a uh, school two days ago for a bunch of third graders. Actually it was like all age. It was like it was a Montessori school, so it was like kindergarten all the way up to like, I think I saw some ninth graders there, maybe pre-high school. I think it's K through eight or something. And so it was a whole huge, some of those kids were like, oh my God, they looked like walking babies. They looked so young. <laughs> so not, like in my daily life. So whenever I see like a three-year-old, I'm like, you're basically a baby that walks. <laughs> you know, they're you, like, what, they look so young. And they probably are. They're probably like four years old. <laughs> so did you play your songs for them or did you play just like some nursery rhymes or I don't I don't know what you do at a school, so I don't I don't know what's uh, going on there. Play well, because they hired me. They they were like, Hey, we're fans and we want you to come play for our kids. So like if they're fans, that means they probably want me to be myself, right? Right. Yeah. Right. They want they want you to play you. They don't want you to play Rafi. No, they yeah, would I hire a, a artists that specifically does that if that was they if that's what they wanted there are, there are artists that you, specifically so play to kids like johnny karate from parks and rec you didn't play baby shark <laughs> that's right. i didn't do a slow 12 8 blues version of baby shark so, <laughs> i did not do that but you know what i am going to do from now on i'm going to prepare like an introduction because whenever i perform at schools they always introduce me I'm going to prepare an introduction catered to kids under the age of like eight. It's going to be like, this is Jackie Vincent. She plays the guitar. 
Her favorite color is purple. Uh, she loves <laughs> she loves dinosaurs. She's 29 years old. She used to climb trees, but now she's too big. Uh, she really <laughs> likes to play kickball. Anyway, so this well, is Jackie. That, that, that's a great <laughs> intro to an eight-year-old, yeah. Or like a four-year-old or like a seven-year-old. I think yeah. I'm going to cater my bio. Next time I play for young kids, at least, I'm going to cater my bio to young kids. My favorite kind of ice cream <laughs> is, you know, this. Her favorite ice cream is chocolate chip cookie dough. There you go. She get, does get, like vegetables. You can connect to the children before you start to rock their world. Exactly. She usually goes to bed around 11 p.m. I'm, these are all questions I've been asked by little don't, kids. Don't let, us keep, don't let us keep you up too late, Jackie. <laughs> I don't go to bed at 11 p.m. I actually go to bed at 5 a.m., but I don't want to negatively influence children. Uh, that that sounds like so I, I work the night shift, so I'm right there with you. Yeah, I'm I'm like a hopeless night owl. Actually, I, that's what that's when I was I was sitting at work last night typing up all all this uh, all this information. I had questions and <laughs> and stuff at, at work, but you know wasn't that much going on, so I had the time to do it. Nighttime is the only time I can write songs because it's the only time like nobody's calling me or like there's all there's no noise going on. If it's daytime, if it's like reasonable human waking hours, then I'm like being bothered by somebody, and it's usually by somebody I love. So I'm 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 grateful. I'm not saying that like with like disdain in my voice or anything. I'm just saying like I have a huge family, and so it's like I can't go one day without hearing from one of them, you know. So uh, I can only practice like really, really, really get stuff done between like 11 p.m. and four in the morning. Cause that's when all of my entire huge family is finally asleep and not calling or texting me. I don't know, that, that sounds nice. Sounds like you have a nice functional family. I have a dysfunctional family, <laughs> I so I them, never- Oh my God, just one day. I never hear from my, any of my dysfunctional family. You don't hear anything from those people. <laughs> well, my sister just alert, moved to London. She's all lonely now and she, uh, she texts me all the time and I'm like, well, then why did you move to London? You chose to move there. <laughs> you know, like, like well, you're the one who chose to go so far away. Don't make me feel bad for not answering your phone call. So anyways, that's a little picture into my family and what's going on with me. But yeah, <laughs> I am blessed. I do love them all. Hey, we all have oh, them. And I answer a lot that of phone call, you know. Don't forget to eat your veggies well. Well, well do you have time to play one more song? Is there a request? I don't know. Let's see. If you have time, there might be a request. Let's see what they say. I always have time for a request. Yay. Oh, Irish has one. Ooh. Ooh. Irish has a request. What's Irish request? Well, Irish, you're going to have to type it in chat. Come on, quickly, dear. Come on. Because I got Which one, one already, too. Watch out, Irish. Your, re your, uh, your request is about to get Old Roy. <laughs> about to get an intercepted re request. Intercepted. Is Old Roy one of your songs? I haven't heard that one yet. I'll that one. I haven't heard of Old Roy. Ear. If you could do that by ear and not need it, not use a machine. Oh no, I'm using a machine. Oh, okay. Not near as impressive. Ugh. There we go. There it is. Yeah. All right. They, so, uh, are we overriding Irish's request now? If you don't want to play yeah, old Roy, if you don't want to play old Roy, uh, how about all rise? All rise. All right. I haven't done an acoustic version of that, but I will do it. I think I could pull it off. I went to church today to try and find my way. The preacher was a shade of gray. Turned on the radio to make my heart grow. All the songs were doing.
it was lost in time. Don't, don't know what to believe. The curse is what I perceive. The truth is in front of my eyes. Over again, over again. They never seem to learn. All rise for the wave of humanity trapped in insanity. All rise for the wave of humanity trapped. What do you, what do you, what do you rather be in love? What do you, what do you, what do you rather be in love? put a new bridge on it. So I'm gonna play that new bridge. Jackie, does this yeah, tell us your views on this? Yes. Does this one. give us insight into your views on religion? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, well, not, a little bit. Not, not, not that we don't <laughs> agree. Uh, I, I grew up in Southern Baptist Church, and I rejected it a long time ago. I, I understand. People's I don't have any problem with religion. I just don't like it when people try to take individuality away and try to tell people that they're wrong, that there's a right and there's a wrong, and they don't recognize gray areas i don't like that i don't that like sounds, it when people are flexible that sounds like every religion not every religion i think buddhism is pretty flexible um except for that extreme buddhism of you i don't know who he was but it was this documentary of this guy who actually figured out how to turn buddhism into like a crazy like zealot religion where they like went out and killed people i forgot it's on netflix really i, I know i need to check that out really check that out too it's a really weird uh, name, so I can't... Extremism? And by weird, I mean just Buddhism? not ordinary. I've never really seen it ever. It's it's a strange kind of name that I'm not used to. It's not actually weird. It's just not what I'm used to. And so I don't remember what it was, but it's this guy, and he like somehow convinces a group of people to become violent in the name of Buddhism. <laughs> Maybe somebody in the chats know what I'm talking about, but... I don't know, but you know, I tell you what, usually people who can, who can incest people... People who can incest people like that are usually insane. Yeah, the guy is insane. And I don't know how he took Buddhism and made people do evil things in the name of it. I have that is tragic and also kind of impressive. Like, yeah. how did you take the most pacifist, the most religion mellow, most peaceful yeah, yeah, way of like life? The most pacifist. It's like kind of DIY. You kind of like customize it to yourself like it has like kind of it has morals but it doesn't tell you to actually do anything it tells you to just meditate and be at peace with yourself and others like it's really simple and i just it's mostly philosophical also it's not like this happened and if you if you don't believe it then you are going to it's not like that. It's yeah, like come on. It's like we're, we're we're educated now. We know how stories are told. We know that they, yes. they, they weren't all written just down. Just do that. They... Buddhism is just like, look, this is how you live a happy life. Just try it. You know what I mean? And this guy somehow turned it into this Ra cult. Radicalized and they go it. around and they beat people up and like kill people. And like somewhere, you know, across the ocean. <laughs> no. I don't remember what it was called, but... Definitely look it up now, though. 
Yeah, let me let me see if I can quickly Google evil Buddhist and see if that works. <laughs> evil Buddhist. Someone evil was telling Buddhist. me about this I'm... documentary like two or three years ago while I was on tour because we were like surfing. Guys, through, uh, I don't know if you guys are noticing this, but Jackie Vincent's becoming a war pig as we speak. Oh, yeah, you looking up it. looking up news for our to talk about on our show. The dark side okay. of Buddhism. Evil evil Buddhist documentary. Oh, there we go. It's called the venerable, the venerable W, the poisonous right. monk behind. It's it's set in Myanmar. It's Myanmar. Myanmar. Okay. Yeah, yeah all the I could evil, find. the poisonous monk behind Myanmar's anti-Muslim vendetta. So they go and they beat up Muslims for being Muslim. That's what they do. Wow. And they wow. do it in the name of Buddhism. I didn't. I didn't add a documentary to my search, so I ended up with the 19 most insane demons and monsters from Buddhism. <laughs> interesting interesting searches there. yeah it's in it's in it's set in Myanmar Ashin Wirathu yeah Ashin Wirathu yeah so it's not actually a weird name it's just a Myanmar name and I don't hear those every day but, yeah some of those yeah. Southeast Asian words are very difficult to pronounce if you don't uh, yes. and, and, and even oh. harder to remember because it's like it's not a name you hear every day over here, at least. So. Have you had a chance to go yeah. to uh, Southeast Asia yet, Jackie? You want to tour Southeast oh, I Asia? Absolutely, love to. I actually have friends that live in uh, Vietnam, but they've been to other places all around. They've been to Cambodia. They've been to a lot of different places. Is that the area of the world we're talking about? Because honestly, geography is one of my weak po points. Yes, that's that's the general area. Yeah, like Vietnam, Cambodia, kind of. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. that's totally Southeast Asia, Thailand. Like Taiwan. Ta well, Taiwan's Thailand. more like China. Taiwan's more like China. Okay, never mind. Yeah, so yeah. Cambodia yeah. and Vietnam is what you're mainly talking about. Yeah, Cambodia, and v uh, Vietnam, Thailand, Thailand. Myanmar. Thailand. Here we go. It was start there's one with a T. Couldn't remember. Yeah, yeah. So my friends actually live over there, and Philippines. they've been just like. They're from America, but they moved there and they've been like building a career in Vietnam. And it's the coolest thing to watch ever. They're called New Fame. Check them out. And they live in Vietnam. And I want to, they've invited me to come visit them and I want to go so bad. Like everybody rides scooters. That sounds amazing. Yeah. You get out there and see the interior. The see the <sighs> it's like Hawaii. It's so tropical. And the weather is perfect. It's always warm. It's like rainforest climate. Oh, uh, I, lo I love tropical environment. When I was in military, I spent spent three and a half years in Panama, and it can completely ruin me. I can't stand the cold. I hate snow. Yeah, no, Boston killed me on that. I already hated cold before I moved to Boston, and then I really hated cold after that. Okay, we, so did you go from Texas to Boston? Are you a Texan? Were you born here? I know you're... Born and raised in Austin, Texas. Sweet. Even better. Yeah. Yep. So how yep. was that? Was that a big uh, culture shock for you? I mean, I know, I know Austin's a pretty cool city. I've never been to Boston myself, so I don't know what it's like there. Is I was there... definitely just like existing around way more like African Americans than I ever have in my life. The black population of Austin is very small, and the black black culture in Austin is not really like represented we only have one like r&b radio station and that's like it you know it's not there's not a lot of black people and there's not a lot of black culture in austin there's just not there's some and you know the hip-hop scene has grown a lot since like 10 years ago but the hip-hop scene compared to like new york's hip-hop scene is like a blip well, you if, know, you, if, you so want, like, if you want the hip hop scene, you got to go to Houston. You got to go to H Town. Houston, even just compared to Houston or Dallas, like the the black music scene in Austin is tiny. Now we have some amazing black artists in Austin that are constantly working twenty four seven to change that, but it's it's a job. It's hard. They're um, trying to shoehorn their way in there. Huh? They want to be in there and just, performing. Just be represented, like. Why do we only have one R&B station? Why do we only have one hip hop show on the on the local station? Why do we only, you know, like, why don't we have any black music festivals? Why is there no hip hop festival or R&B festival or any of that? Like, why do we have to drive out of Austin to go and see those things? Yeah, and Austin's so, like the music capital of Texas, basically. Yeah, and there's a whole like corner, like a whole like giant quarter of the pie not represented very strongly. 
And, you know, people will blame that on the fact that there's not a huge black population. It's only 6% of the Austin population is black. It might have gone up to 7 or 8, but that's, yeah, no. There's hardly any black people here. And um, then a huge question for Austin and its community is why? Why aren't there a lot of black people here? Shouldn't we look into that? What's your theory? I don't really know. Don't have one? Not yet? Some, I just, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I don't know if it's the chicken or the egg. Is there not a lot of black people here because we don't have black culture represented and so they don't feel welcome here? Or do we not, or, or is it the other way around? Do we not have a lot of black culture here because there's not a lot, a lot of black people here? Irish hearts. Irish hearts said black people are smart and know better than to stay in the heat. No, 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 no. She's she's in Austin. She's in Austin, Austin dude. She's not in Boston. Austin, Texas. We're talking about Austin, Texas. No, yeah. no. Yeah. I was saying, was it a culture shock? The original question was, is was it a culture shock to move to Boston? Yes, it was because I've never been around that many black people. I roll into Berkeley and there's like 30 people in the room and 20 of them are black. And then the rest of the 10 are just like a hodgepodge of every other like race. And usually it's the other way around. In Austin, you go into a room, there's 30 people, and 23 of them are white, and then there's seven of them that are like maybe Hispanic. <laughs> and then there's maybe one black person. And actually, I'm that black person. <laughs> and I'm the one like noticing the stats. I'm like, oh, I'm the only one again. Cool. It happens all the time. And, you feel like it's a cultural? I don't, I don't. I love people. I love people of all color and creeds and backgrounds and everything. As long as it's a fun party, but that doesn't mean I don't notice these things. I still notice. I'm still like, okay, why isn't this like New York? Like, why isn't everybody here? I want everybody to be here. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. different regions, especially like in the South and in Texas, people are so backwards and they they hold on to to their old ideals as long as they possibly can. And, you know, that's why I love Dallas so much because it's a cultural melting it's pot. It's changing. Is, it's definitely Dallas, changing. You can you can find this is the most diverse in, in, in the country. I was very happy to come back to Dallas, even though I like I I, I love Vegas. You know, that oh, how's Vegas? That place must be like surreal sometimes. Well, let me let me tell you, Jackie. You know they call New York City the city that never sleeps. That's a big no, that's fat BS. load of Brooklyn bullshit. Brooklyn closes at like eleven forty-five. They don't even wait till midnight. Okay, Brooklyn's Ve like peace. Vegas is the true twenty-four hour city. It, it's constant. You can buy groceries. You can you know you can do anything that you would almost anything that you can do during the day at night there. I mean you can't like you can't go you can't go buy an insurance policy. But yeah, you can't do like you can't go to the post office, but like but you, literally, you, know. you, you can go shopping at, at Forever Twenty One. You, you, you could get married at, yeah, at three, <laughs> three in the morning. morning. You can get anything you need at at the Wally World. Uh, and yeah, the first, and then you now need to make, make a, oh, you need to make a turkey turkey dinner, and it's one a.m. Well, we'll have you cooking it by two. And now they had the dispensary, so you can there. Oh, oh, some of them are twenty four. Oh, huh? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. But you're gonna pay for it. It's like six p.m. in L.A. But you're gonna, pay, but you're gonna pay for it. It is, it is a premium. Premium. They're open twenty four seven. But yeah, it's a premium. Yeah, Anarchy said you can eat it at a buffet at a strip club, at whatever time of day. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't either personally. I, I wouldn't eat at a strip club. Yeah, gross. Uh, oh no, no, strip club food is rad. <laughs> you know. Well, I, I will take your word for it. I, I think no, I mean, that, it's but, good. The kitchen is separate from the girls. Like, the girls I, aren't, like, stripping in the kitchen. I, I, I get that, but, <laughs> but it, what's in my head is... It wasn't equaling that, but... Um, that That's how I see it. I'm that's like, how you see it? There's naked, there's naked women who... But they're not in the kitchen. I don't kitchen. know where they've been. I don't they're know what they cooking. do. They're not the food, cooks. And there's food present. You know, I don't know what kind of stuff is splashing around and the, the dancers dripping. Are, and in the kitchen, though. And they're not dirty. Honestly, you should be more concerned walking into an Applebee's and seeing a bunch of kids running around than you should be about strippers. Strippers aren't dirty. They're just naked. There's a difference between naked and dirty. And also, they're not in the kitchen. They're in the stripping area. The kitchen's like right. in the back. They don't have their hands on the spoons. They're they're on the two dollar. They're on the two dollar two dollar the bills. They're like on the stage. They're they're like walking around the stage, like serving drinks. Maybe. Yeah, they yeah, ain't touching not, much but the pole. I don't know. They're not in the kitchen. And the food, they actually get really 
really good food. And since the girls make them all their money, they don't charge a lot for it. You'll get like a restaurant quality T-bone steak from a strip strip club that you would normally pay like 30 bucks, but really you're paying like eight ninety nine for it because it's steak night Wednesday or some shit. Well, next time I'm at a strip club, I'll, uh, I guess I'll try this. Yeah, yeah I've, I've, I've never. I, I'm not. <laughs> Nobody's big, ever recommended a strip club. I'm not a big frequenter. Me, so. <laughs> I'm not a. Big, you know, I know I'm not this. a frequent flyer to a strip club. So <laughs> next time I'm in there, I'll get the T-bone. <laughs> For real man, I got the BLT. Oh my god, it was the thick cut bacon. It was like this thick, dude. It had like it was like this thick and like this long, and it was like four strips of it. And then the BLT was like the lettuce was like like chopped wedge lettuce. The water that they washed it with was still on top. I was like, yeah. They put like all this mayonnaise. <laughs> it was so good. And the, oh my God, and the tomatoes. And they toasted the bread perfect. Yeah, can, wait, one of, one, the one chat of, is saying you can eat that while you get twerked on. <laughs> yeah, and our, our listeners are also saying that you know more about strip clubs than we do. You know how? Well, I know. Uh, please do so tell. tell. So I have six older brothers, and one of them, uh, he used to be a bouncer at this strip club downtown. And so one day, it was like Sunday at like 3 or 4 o'clock, he like texts me, and he's like, hey, you think you could pick me up some green and bring it to the club? And uh, I'll uh, buy you lunch. And he really was just going to get me lunch at the strip club. So I roll in, and uh, he lets me in through the kitchen. And the kitchen was nice. It Smelled like a kitchen, you know, smelled like cooking food and soap. And uh, then we roll into the main strip club and everybody is ass naked. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't ready for like the transition from the kitchen to like everyone in the building being ass naked. So I roll in and I'm just like, and I'm like trying not to look at titties and I'm like 19 years old, right? And of course, now I just look at the titties because that's what the, that's what they're doing. They're they're walking around naked so that you can look at their titties and but, other things, right? But you went in thinking about food, so it kind of threw yeah, you off. Yeah, I went in thinking stuff. about food and like you know doing a favor for my brother. And um, so we roll in, and he's like, "So here's the menu," and he hands me the menu, and I order <laughs> the BLT. And then he's like, "Hey, you want to meet my boss? I got to go get paid." So we go back to his boss's office and. Um, we walk in together and his boss is like looking me up and down and he's like, Hey, how yeah. old are you? Yeah. <laughs> and then, like he's, he's trying and then to hire William, you. Oh no. I didn't even like, I didn't even say anything. I was like, and so William literally looks at him. He's like, dude, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was just like, I'm here to get my check. This is my sister. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> he literally oh was my like, goodness. Dude, no, that's hilarious. Uh, yeah. He had to warn. He had to warn his boss. Look, don't be sizing don't up my, my baby sister. sister. No. So <laughs> he got so serious. I've never seen him that serious because he's like my like laid back whatever you know, say la vie brother. Never seen him get that serious. And then we went back out and he and I I ate that BLT and it was rad. <laughs> You know, I think the owner might have had a, a button he could push and talk to the 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 uh, the kitchen to say, make that BLT especially <laughs> awesome. <laughs> trying to get a trying to get a new girl. So, yeah, she uh, is so hot. Yeah, yeah. Let's get that. Hook it up on that BLT. That extra be mayo. The best BLT you ever made. <laughs> she looks like an extra mayo kind of chick. <laughs> I'm make you I'm make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> I don't even so know what that means. If you come and work here, you can have this BLT every day. Every day. <laughs> I haven't even had the T-bone yet. I'd watch be like, no, I'm gonna, dude. Watch. <laughs> I play the I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this completely up. I'm going to go into a strip club, and, and before I can even get in, I'm going to be like, yeah, I need a T-bone. Then they're going to look at me and go, we don't have food here. They I know, right? <laughs> even though they do. Wait, I thought you're every strip club had food. Well, you know, don't I, they I, all have food? I have a strip club food story. I, w I was working in, in Las Vegas, and there was a strip club that was advertising on, on the radio that they were having free breakfast. So me and the guys that we were working together, when we were done, we went to this club for free breakfast. Not necessarily for, because it was a strip club, but there were, it was free. And we got yeah. there, and there was no food. Oh, and man. we asked them, and they were like, oh, y 
you were serious? You really want the food? <laughs> and they went out and they went out and got his food from someplace else. It was really terrible. So it was a bad experience. I don't I, I don't like the idea of eating in a strip club. I'm not going to say that I can definitively tell you that all strip clubs have food, but I can tell you that Palazzo, Palazzo on Ben White in Austin, Texas has really good food. All right, I'm I'm going to go there one day. And I'm gonna yep, say, hey, Jackie, yeah. Jackie Vinson sent me here. They, she recommended you, highly recommended. And they're gonna be like, oh, Will's sister? Hell yeah! <laughs> he worked there for like eight years, and then he got this really awesome job working for UPS. Oh, so he's not a bouncer anymore? No, because UPS pays so much more. Oh my God, UPS is a really good job. It's a really hard job to get to be a driver for UPS. It's a really hard job to get, but once you get it, it's a great job. You get paid really well, and the the uh, benefits are awesome. Sad but you have sure. to like grind in the warehouse for like seven years just to get it. Oh. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of lifting involved in that, right? Yeah, you have to work at UPS for a minimum of like five years before you can even apply to be a driver. Ooh. Oh wow. Yeah. I'm so glad I work in the medical field. Yeah. Well, William drives for UPS now, and he loves that job. So, yeah, he made it. <laughs> he's got a great job and he loves it and he's made it well Jackie we would like to thank you so much for being on our show you've been great no we problem. hope you it's come back sometime and you're welcome to come back anytime, anytime you, want. you want hey but can we play your music yeah yeah go ahead <laughs> wait are, we're, are, wait, are, are we allowed to play your music and oh, not violate copyright yeah, law <laughs> see on our, on our platform like copyright law if you, if you get paid you know if you get any money man send it to me Venmo me Oh yeah, we we probably won't get paid doing it, but <laughs> well, that's fine then. Our platform, we had to get, we had to have express permission. If we have express permission, we can play your videos whenever we want. It's okay. Yes, you can play my video. Anything I put up on YouTube or Spotify, you're welcome to play. All right, sweet. So where can we, uh, where can we buy your album? Oh, you can buy my album from my website or from Bandcamp. My ba my website will lead you to Bandcamp. So just go to the music section of my website and click on Bandcamp. I hear a lot about this band camp. I must check it out, I guess. It's great. It's it's like a store for musicians, basically. And uh, they don't charge you a huge fee to use it. So you can make a pretty good profit. They're very uh, supportive of independent musicians. What formats are you releasing this new album on? Cassette? Uh, thing. CD, I distributed it through CD Vinyl? <laughs> oh, and it's going to be CD and vinyl. Yeah. CD and so it's going to be like iTunes, Apple... Spotify, everything, Amazon, everything, and then also CD and vinyl. This one time at Bandcamp, I bought Jackie Vincent's newest album. <laughs> Good one, man. I wonder if they've used that as a website. They should. <laughs> they should use it. Yeah, I'll, this I'll, one time at Bandcamp, I supported this great independent artist. I want to get it on. <laughs> I want to get it on vinyl. That's that's my new fun little thing that I like to do. I, I love just to paid the invoice for the vinyl today. So it's very, it's, oh, very nice. it's very nostalgic for me play records yeah well it's happening i just paid for it so beautiful Groovy. and, and it's going to be ready to be you can order these things uh on amazon when how soon uh, april after, 5th is when it drops the, the 5th okay so you can pre-order the, the vinyl i'm only printing five uh, 300 of this limited edition vinyl it's gonna be like wacky color and really great like extended panels inside and stuff so there's only 300 of those, and you can pre-order that, um, I believe, through my website. Very or maybe good. it's not set up yet, and I'll send an email out about it when it's set up. All right, sweet. Yeah, I want one of those. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a, it's like this cool swirl pattern on the actual disc, and there's more like panels on the inside, more stuff to read. You know. Awesome. I can't wait. Can't wait to see it. Show. Sure. I'm excited about it too. It's my first vinyl. Well, thank you so much for being here. No problem. Yeah, no, amazing. Thanks for having me. You're, thanks for playing. You're, for you're us. incredibly talented, and you have a wonderful uh, uh, personality. I'd like to talk to you. You're funny. Anytime you want to come back, please. Yeah, come out. Come right. out. Come on. Well, you know, maybe we can make it like a yearly thing because, you know, we need to stay updated on what each other's doing. Exactly. And have well, you ever had anybody I'll, just hang I'll, up I'll, I'll keep watching. Uh, actually, yeah, your mother in law. <laughs> She did. Yeah, Martha. Martha hangs out with us. No, I'm. I'm saying hung up on you. Oh, hung like, up. No, 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 no. Never. Nobody's ever hung up on us. Nobody's ever hung up on us. 
I thought no, you said he, hang out with us. I'm like, yeah, Martha hangs out with us. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, hung up on you. No, nobody's, no, ever, not nobody's yet. ever hung up. Not yet. But uh, I suspect when we get the, uh, what were we going to get on? The the guy, the crazy, the crazy guy. Which Alex crazy Jones? Guy? <laughs> no, oh. no. The guys who think that the flat earthers. Oh, oh. When we the get the flat earthers on, the flat yeah, earthers. they're probably going to hang up on me. They might hang up on us. <laughs> That's gonna be a that's gonna be a fun one. You guys ever watch Eric Andre? No, I have not. Can you check it out? You gotta watch Eric Andre. Okay. All he, he purposefully hires people that are just like crazy and then just messes with them. It's a talk show and he just messes with crazy people. Oh, nice. Oh, not yeah. like, but not like actual like crazy people who need help. Just like people who are really like into themselves and stuff. He just nice. messes with them, and they don't yeah. know. That they're being messed with. So, like, their reactions on his show are real. They're like, some of them run away. It's insane. You should just watch it. Irish said, uh, Irish Heart says in the chat, hook us up with Alex Jones so we can see that. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then Anarchy says, Alex Jones is just going to keep plugging his protein shakes. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and occasionally having meltdowns on screen. Oh, that would be great. So that that's, be that's good content. Screen. Yeah, it's absolutely good. Con- good, good he, he already had a meltdown. He cried. It was insane. It made me feel bad for him. Oh, yeah. But yeah. also, I don't feel bad for him because he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like the the motherly person in me was like, oh, but then like the real person in me was like, nah, screw him. <laughs> I'm glad you're crying. <laughs> I'm glad you have to to break down. Well, thank you so much, Jackie. We're gonna let you for the for the for the 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 third time. time. (laughs) For the third, fourth time, but we will we will let you go. We we sure you have things that you have to do. You have music to make tonight. You got stuff going on. It's it's still early for me, but you know, I guess I should eat dinner. Oh, it's early for me too. Yeah, it's it's ten. We're in the same time zone. Yeah, we know what time it is. We know what time it is. Do you? And tell you what time it is. <laughs> so much meaning in that sentence. It trips me out. Anyways, I will see y'all later. Bye. Thanks, you have a Jackie. Good one. Thanks for being here. Later. No problem. See ya. Bye. Jackie Vincent, ladies and gentlemen. That was the shit.